Tune in to the Dating Advisory Board Show Wednesdays at 6 p.m. to learn how to lead your love life like a CEO leads a company. The Business of Dating Show. We discuss how to approach romance like you would approach the boardroom with confidence, grace, and focus. Learn how to advocate for your needs, brand you, determine your core non-negotiables, create a board of advisors, and more. After all, the key to success is collaboration, both in business and personal relationships. Make sure that the reflection in the mirror is the best version of yourself before you start swiping right. This is Jen Hecht, Chairwoman of the Dating Advisory Board, and welcome to the show. Well, hello, and welcome to the Dating Advisory Board show. I'm your host, Jen Hecht. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I have an unbelievable show lined up talking all about dating and relationship advice. We have the wonderful Rita Goodrow, as well as Esther Boykin. I'm going to give some background on them because they, as you can see, aren't here because of traffic. Decided to have a lot of construction uh, in D.C. Never a dull moment. <laughs> so, um, but let me just give you some background on Rita and kind of go over what we're going to talk about on the show today. Um, um, Rita Goodrow, in 2011, Rita Goodrow left her life as a business attorney, which she led for over 10 years and became a dating and relationship coach. Her first year in business, she was asked to tour as an expert panelist and speaker, serve as an expert for the Washington Post, and was a finalist for the Best Dating Coach and the I Date 2014 Awards. She began coaching entrepreneurs on starting and building their businesses and has since founded the Women's Business Garden, which if you have not signed up for it, I highly recommend doing. It. Uh, and then you can find that on Facebook, and uh, which is a global community of women who are creating new futures for themselves, their communities, and the world through entrepreneurship. The mission of the Women's Business Garden is to catalyze women's entrepreneurship and sustainable business growth and success through powerful education, mentorship, and community. In 2016, Women's Business Garden was nominated and selected as a change-making company by the State of Women's Summit, coming by the White House. And also, we have Esther Boykin. She's not here right now, but if she was, you would see her in this, this region. <laughs> She's a, as a licensed marriage and therapist, family therapist. She's also a relationship coach and expert. Her simple yet effective tips and philosophies on relationships and self-care has been featured in a variety of TV, digital print, radio, media outlets, including Good Morning Washington, Fox 5 DC, The New York Times, Sirius XM, Bustle, RealSimple.com, Hitched Magazine, Red Book, and Glamour. So what we're going to talk about today, and also I'm going to go live on Facebook, and we'll check down um, during the breaks as well. If you have any questions for us, we will be answering them on the show. So make sure you go on Facebook and check out either WLVS, or you can go on the Jen Hecht um, on Facebook as well, and you can answer it. But some of the things we're going to go all over today is what's your advice for singles? So basically, what I'm excited about to her hear from Rita and Esther. So Rita comes from the professional, uh, from a relationship side of it, but she's also creating businesses. So, and then uh, Esther is coming in from on the more of the uh, fa you know family and relationship coach as well. So this is the dating advisory board. So merging the business and dating aspect of it. I'm excited to see what some of the pitfalls are, especially with entrepreneurship. A lot of people have more of a fear-based mind thinking, especially if they're starting new businesses that have a tendency to procrastinate and find reasons to do something. I know I do. When I have a list of 20 things to do, I'm like, oh, let me just go, you know, put away the dishes or do this or so, you know, so how to break that cycle. So I'm really excited for Rita to talk about that as well. And um, also how therapy is not a dirty word. If you go on to Esther's site, um, estherboykin.com, and check out, she has a lot of events coming up and I uh, want to talk about that. And you're probably wondering what this book is here. So next week, we have an unbelievable episode as well. I have my co fellow co-authors. So this is my first chapter I wrote in this book. Uh, it's called The Last Mile. Some of you know about my story with The Last Mile. Uh, my dad, uh, I'm a big tennis player. Um, player. I don't want to give too much away from the chapter, but um, I've been training since a very young age in order to get a scholarship to play school. And 
had an eight hour tennis camp and my dad decided to say, okay, let's have you run the last mile home. Yeah. Middle of Michigan summer. It was brutal, but it was, the whole premise was that he knew I had more to give, even though I thought I was done. So when, how often are you running the last mile in your both personal and professional life? So I talk about that in the book and some other things. But the one thing I love about this is it is collaboration and sisterhood. Obviously, the Dating Advisory Board is helping to bring community and empower women to be the best version of themselves. And it's very, uh, very proud of all these other co-authors, uh, the sisterhood folios, because of the simple fact that they are sharing their authentic stories. And I also tell you, obviously, when I call it, you know, the Facebook timeline, don't let it get it twisted because people look at that and say, oh, everyone's lives are perfect. No, they're not. They just don't talk about it. Uh, and so it's a very eye-opening experience. It took a lot of guts uh, for these women to tell their true stories. And I'm so thankful that I was able to be a part of this. So thank you to Carol Starr Taylor. And next week, and Mae McCarmo wrote the foreword. And Molly Pompadith, uh, community, SOAR Community Network President and CEO and Founder, also wrote a chapter. Elaine espinola Keltz, she wrote a chapter as well. So we will all be on the show next week. So make sure you tune in. And you can buy it on, it actually goes live on midnight next Tuesday night so on Wednesday it will be available and you can order it on Amazon so it's born to be me and I'm so excited to dive in and learn about all these amazing stories I just got the book by the way so it's nice smooth copper but it's nice but um so anyway well we're gonna take a short break I'm gonna see where my guests are and see how close they are before I start uh dancing right Jacob <laughs> yeah Maybe you have to break down too <laughs> so we'll be right back thanks so much It's Jen Heck, the Dating Advisory Board. They are T minus three minutes away. At least Rita is, and I hopefully Esther is right behind them. So while we have some time here, I uh, had an interesting story. Um, so I was with a friend today, and we were talking about Bumble, and so he was uh, telling me his side, and uh, I just wanted to talk about profiles. You know, I talk a lot about do's and don'ts on profiles, how to set them up properly, and I wanted to get his perspective on what you should be doing or what you're seeing out there. So I was able to get feedback on him on my profile, <laughs> how that looked, and what you should be writing. And so he, it was interesting to see what he had to say as well. Um, obviously, I think, uh, number one, your first picture should be a high-res picture. And I think they all should be high-res. Um, I don't think they should be grainy or out there or a lot of sunglasses. I mean, maybe if you're skiing, I mean, clearly, you know, it's, it's bright out there. But <laughs> um, for the most part. Um, but you want to have like three or four, at least three or four. Some are actually, some of these new sites are actually requiring six pictures or more. Um, and they have to be, I would have the story, have them tell a story. So if you're into biking, if you're into hiking, if you're into swimming, and those are things that are very important to you, uh, then put those pictures up there. Don't put them with four different, the main, we come across a couple profiles where it was three people as the main picture. Well, which one is it? I mean, it's not where's Waldo. It's okay. You're what you're trying to like in sales you're trying to sell you because you're the product now just like in business so make sure that you put that best picture up there and make sure that they're all similar so it's not dated especially if they're older I mean you can tell 
we can tell if they're dated. And, uh, and then especially it, people actually do read the descriptions. So that is actually a fact. So make sure that when you're going in there and you're writing a profile, um, uh, description that it's witty and it's you. And if you're going to have somebody else write it, maybe you don't feel comfortable, just make sure it's specific to who you are and that you can talk about it. The last thing you want to do is make sure you get on a date with someone and they start asking you questions and you're like, what? I don't know. Well, it's because you didn't write it. <laughs> so just make sure that you're honest with it and it's it's really, truly you. And then he also gave a good example um, for, our, for us girls out there is that answer the question. So if you're texting back and forth, answer the question and then ask a question. That's how you keep it going. And the, the funny and actually using something from a picture, right? So if it's a, you know, hanging off a wall or something, you can make something kind of funny around uh, to help them kind of see your personality because you want to be fun and, and, and actually have it tell a story about you. So I would say I would highly recommend, obviously, high-res pictures. Have the pictures tell a story about you. Have them be current, right? You don't want to have the high school picture from 20 years ago. <laughs> that does not uh, doesn't go well. And then ask that person out, especially if it's a guy. I mean, we're, we still want chivalry. Uh, and if you're, if you're just a pen pal and you're going back and forth for, I don't know, 20, you know, 20 days. That's how it feels sometimes. But, but just ask them on a date. Ask them you know, what they like to do and then kind of come up with a date on that. So I would say that, Jacob, am I missing anything else? our sound engineer. I know, but you probably hear from your friends. Is it different for the millennials? Are they asking them out on the dates a lot or are they just talking, chatting a lot? They do both. See, that's interesting too. And I think one of the questions that I have um, for Esther when she gets here is the divorce rate is around 60%. What are the factors leading this staggering number? I've read a lot of articles, had a lot of conversations with, you know, is the traditional marriage doomed? Especially if you have been married um, and divorced, uh, how has that changed? So I'd like to obviously hear your feedback. You can hit us up on Twitter. I'll be checking the Twitter as well. So that would be one. And um, talking about top... I'm trying to think what else. Top issues for entrepreneurs starting a business we're going to talk about and how we can communicate better, which is key. So I think one of the guests just arrived. So I'm going to go back on a break real quick. And when we come back, hopefully they will be here. All right. Thanks. Jen Hecht, we're back. 
Still waiting, a lot of traffic. But uh, I was talking to Jacob on the break. He's our awesome sound engineer. And he's like, why don't you tell us some stories? So I'll actually go into a little bit of the last mile and what that actually meant for me and uh, how my dad has been such a huge inspiration to me, raising me as a single father and grooming me into being a... uh, badass in tennis and (laughs) in business. So um, I really take a lot of credit for where I am today and who I am today is because of my father sacrificed for me to have my dream come true. And they were just in town. We had a great, great time there. Flew in from Michigan and we were talking as my dad was telling a story because my son had this art project. He's really good. I did not get the art gene. He did. My son, my son got it. Uh, Both of them have it. But uh, so I was sitting there and my dad said to me, um, my dad said to me, he's like, Jen, he's like, I have a, he's like, oh, he's like, I can tell you didn't, you know, it's not on our side. And he's like, I have a story for you. And I said, okay, story. I'm like, this is going to be good. What is a rookie coming up with today? And so he said, well, you know, when you were 13, it was maybe 12, 13 years old. And when it was a parent teacher night at school and went into your art class and the teacher was walking around. I was like, he's like, oh, wow, who did that? And our teacher said, oh, your daughter did. He said, what? She did that? She has this talent that we didn't even know about? Like, we need to really look into this. I mean, this is really good for a 12-year-old, right? And so he said, I got home. I came out. I was like, Jen, I cannot, or Jennifer, even though I don't go by Jennifer, I don't like it, so don't call me Jennifer, okay? But uh, (laughs) true story. But I go, so he said, Jennifer, I can't believe I went to school, and you're amazing. I mean, oh my God, you have this art talent. I was like, I didn't do it. I said, I had my friend do it. I'm all about delegating. And I thought, I started laughing. I said, wow, oh my gosh, I knew how to delegate back in the day (laughs) to stay in your lane. So then, so I talk about a lot of the times is staying in my lane, obviously, and, and doing what you're really good at and delegating for other people's strengths. So I know what my strengths are. I know where my weaknesses are in both, you know, obviously in the in business, if I need help with something, I just go to my subject matter experts, especially when I go in for business, when I'm creating these communication infrastructures and I'm looking at how they, their businesses are, are run, how can we make it more, run more efficiently? And by doing that, I would have, um, if I, maybe it'd be an accounting person or I just look at every facet of the business and see how we can make it run more smoothly. So that was my my story about how I delegated at a young age. So you can't try to do everything all at once because, or try to do everything because you'll burn out and you'll never really get to be um, be successful in, in a shorter period of time. But also collaboration is key. Um, obviously it's not competition, but it's collaboration. So so that's my story. Um, yes, I cannot paint. I cannot. I mean, even my art. Oh God, what is it called, Jacob? Paint, paint night or something. Oh, I mean, this is horrible. I did one. I was like, I don't even know why my son wants it in his room because it's just no West Bueno. <laughs> but he loves it. But um, so I actually have one guest just arrived. Rita is here on the show. She is getting ready to come on. And I mean, it is traffic is a bear out there. I don't know why they decide to close all the roads into the city. It doesn't seem, seem very nice. <laughs> People, uh, get it together, traffic, was the Department of Transportation. <laughs> they didn't get that memo that people have jobs and they have things that they need to do. <laughs> Bet their execs are home. Um, but anyway, so come on up, Rita. We got Rita. I already gave them your intro. <laughs> oh my yes. Hello. So, hi, Rita. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all good. No, it's all good. So, um, so Rita, I was giving the background on. I want to talk about. I talked about the women's business garden and your background in the dating and how you translated, which I thought was great. You know, when Esther comes, we talk about the yes. business because it's the dating advisory board. Yes. And then obviously about relationships too. So, but you come from both ends of it. Yes. Yeah. So what I love about. So what I wanted to talk about, which I think, and you know, I am guilty of it, and you know this from my high achievers club. <laughs> uh, my check-ins are uh, a little late during the day, but uh, <laughs> but I think that when you're starting off a business or you're starting out trying to have okay I have this plan I want to do this 
and then they find reasons not to do it. They'll say, I got to clean my my room oh, yeah. right now. I got to clear. Like, how do we, is that more of a fear base? Cause, so can we talk about that? How to stop that and just, just push through the fear or push? Sure. So like when you want to procrastinate, basically. Yeah. Amen. Right? Okay. <laughs> so believe it or not. So the first thing to understand about procrastination is that it is rooted in perfectionism. So perfectionists yeah, tend to be procrastinators, especially when they're trying something new. Okay. Mm. So this is why it's, let me give you an example from my life from back when I used to be a procrastinator. Right. So I was a diehard perfectionist, wanted A's, wanted good grades in school and college and law school. So what I ended up doing was writing my papers, but I would wait till the last minute. All right. Okay. Write them all in one night, barely any research, barely whatever. If, if my mom's watching, I, I'm this, I'm making this up. It didn't okay. happen. <laughs> No, she's just making it up. <laughs> and so I used to wait till the last minute, cram it in. I would run it down to the mailbox where it had to be turned in, right? And I get it back and I get like a B minus or a C, right? Which I would say, oh, okay, see, if I had had the whole time to work on my paper, I would have gotten an A. Mm -hmm. But because I did it all in one night, that's why I got a C. Right. Had I worked on my paper the entire time, and still gotten a C or a B minus, then it would have been my fault, right? I wouldn't have been excellent. I wouldn't have excelled. And so as a perfectionist, that's my nightmare. That's yeah. my worst nightmare, right? Makes sense. So to not know, right, that to not be able to say it was me, I had to blame it on other stuff. So I had to create the situations that could blame it on other things, right? So I could blame it on other stuff. So business owners especially do this a lot. OK, because it's new and it's scary. You know, there are yeah. a lot of new and scary things that you have to do when you start a business and perfectionists tend to go, what if I fail? Then that means I'm not good. Right. You're starting at the bottom. You're, you, maybe you were in corporate America and you worked your way to the top. Right. And you're really good at what you did. And now you're doing something new and that's scary. And you're not used to being back at the bottom. Right. You need yeah. to climb back up to the top. So anything that could make you fall or stumble, you don't want to do. So you'll find a reason to push that off, right? right? You'll find a reason to, nope, I'd rather clean my bathroom. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm just going to clean up my closets because, you know, I haven't done that in, I don't know, three years. But it sounds like a pretty good time to do that, even though I got this 20 list long. <laughs> I don't know. Right? Been, yeah. We'll get somebody else to clean your closet. Yeah. Right? But, but that's why. So they, they want to push it off because they don't want to fail. They're mm -hmm. afraid of rejection, failure, or other people's opinions, right? So I yeah, other people's opinions is probably one of the higher ones. Both of all, really, all, all three. Of them, all rejection, of them. All three. failure, all other people's opinions. They all work together okay. too, right? So what people will do is they will have whatever, watching TV, I've got to play with my kids, right? Kids are the biggest distraction because people feel like that's a justifiable reason, right? I'm putting my kids first. I'm playing with mm -hmm. my kids. I'm spending time with my kids. Like, don't you get it? That's okay. If I was watching TV, that's not okay. Right. But it's my kids. Mm -hmm. And that's okay to a point, right? But so people will pick all this stuff to procrastinate on to do, and then they don't get their things done. But it's not their fault at that point, right? It's not their fault that it didn't work because they didn't try it. Right. And without trying it, they can't fail, right? So I ask people, when you're afraid of doing so, or when you're not doing something, when you're just procrastinating, ask yourself, what am I really afraid of, right? Because you're not, I, so you'll, you'll, you'll love this. I use this example uh, with my dating clients, mm -hmm. right? Uh, my dating clients are afraid of clowns. A couple of people are afraid of clowns, okay? Like killer clowns and <laughs> like the killer, stores? Like killer clowns. Deathly They're afraid, down there. <laughs> deathly afraid of clowns, right? Did you see, real quick, did you see that um, the mime going around with a balloon? Yes. Like a tied to it, the, yes. No, tie, just tied to the drain, like next yeah, to like, and, and, yeah, from yeah. the movie. That's from the movie. No, yeah, yeah but it was just some, no, somebody yes. did in their neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, I was like, Freaky. oh my gosh. That Freaky, was, yeah. That's terrible. Don't do things like that. That's terrible. That one about the ex, like your ex-boyfriend's down here or something. <laughs> here you go. Google it. It was like your ex is down here. And you're like, all right. All right. Well, he can, he can stay down there then, right? He can stay. So I say they're, they're afraid of clowns. So you know what they're not doing? They're not saying that they're going to go date a clown. They're not putting up on a profile, please clowns, come see me, right? Mm -hmm. When you yeah. really, when please you really, not, not, not intentionally, right? right. So <laughs> when, um, when you're afraid of something, you're not going to think about it. You're not going to do, in fact, clowns are the last thing in their mind. Or jack wagons. Right, or jack wagons. Yeah. Last thing in their mind, right? 
So when people say, I want to start my business, I want to do a webinar, they're not scared of it or they wouldn't have thought of it. They wouldn't even be making steps towards doing a webinar or cold calling somebody or speaking or being on the show. Like They wouldn't even think about doing it if they were really afraid of it, right? But they're not afraid of that thing. They're afraid of what could happen as a result of that thing. Good or bad, right? Good or bad. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid of looking silly, of not sounding smart, of what people are going to think of them, right? So once I say, well, what are you really afraid of? then they're able to mitigate that damage. If you're afraid of sounding stupid or not knowledgeable, what can you do to research and make sure you have all, to practice, to to run your lines? What could Mm -hmm. you do, right? So once people see that, they're like, oh, but they're never able to get to that point because they're hung up on being scared of the thing. I'm afraid of being on Jin's show. I'm afraid of a webinar. I'm afraid, but they're not afraid of that. They're Mm -hmm. afraid of the result of that, right? So by asking yourself, what am I really resisting? What am I really afraid of? you can start mitigating that damage and then you'll step into the thing. Yeah. Well, I like that because, I mean, I had to step into fear at 6.05 I've <laughs> never had to do before. You've never had to do that I've before? I've never. And I was oh, like, wow, that's first the universe. Here. I was like, there you go. Just pushing me when I out of my comfort zone. That's right. And I was like, I don't have, like, you know, they call them the crutches or you don't have it. Someone and I was like, oh, I'm Jacob, talk to me. When I'm like, sitting here by myself. I was, God I was wondering if the out. cameraman was going to be up here and you guys were going to be talking about Yeah, and I thought to myself, I was like, you know, even if I sound ridiculous or they didn't like my story, <laughs> or whatever. whatever I mean at least I did it so the next time I go on I'll be like okay now yep. I got my list now I wasn't you know I didn't have I wasn't prepared but it's just that's my thing like sometimes life happens like you get stuck in traffic for two hours coming to DC I mean that does yeah, happen right it does and happen. so just uh, you can't always be prepared you just gotta have to run so I told a funny story about my art like how I'm not an artist <laughs> no I I can attest to that not I can attest to that she is not an oh artist. yes oh that I should have brought that photo oh, dang I, it I should have brought we it we were <laughs> oh my god we had so much fun we were at Molly's uh Sword community network event um last Friday and we had to draw these you know a story like a story about our life and I said this is not a talent this is something that I didn't she's like clearly she's much better at telling the story than yeah, drawing it's the story. just like I don't even know what that is and I'm like <laughs> I don't really know what it is either <laughs> whatever it's part of my life it's great yeah, it's good so with dating to bring it back to dating yeah. right people will procrastinate on signing up for an online dating site oh, I just haven't had the time to do it. Haven't Mm -hmm. had the time. Or actually responding to messages or searching for people, right? Or they'll... they'll, Or agreeing to go on a date. Agreeing to go on a date or going to a meetup event or going to a place where they'll meet people and they blame it on everything else. But really, if they stopped and said, what am I really afraid of? What am I really resisting? It would be fear of rejection, fear of nobody talking to me, fear of what people are going to think that they're not going to think. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Like, and But the unknown is what if... We, we are rejected. What if we've, mm-hmm. it really does come back to what do people think of us? Right. What if it doesn't work out? What if people say no to Or me? maybe some people say, what if it did? That's different. That yeah. That's a different fear. What if, and, and that is a real fear, fear of success. Mm-hmm. Because if I succeed, my life has to change. Single, okay, single women are notorious at that fear, actually. The older that we get when mm. we're single, the, the more used to having our own life we are, our own routine, our own schedule, putting whatever we want to in the grocery in the, in the grocery cart, uh, the, have, cooking whatever we want, going to bed when we want. So the minute we become successful with dating, we have to start thinking my life will change. I can't decorate exactly the way I want. I have to make room for somebody else in my life. And the more you get used to having that singlehood, Right, and that single it's kind them, of tough to right? then yeah. in your subconscious, you're actually a little afraid of what if I do meet somebody? What if it does work out? What if this relationship takes off? Because then I have to change my life to accommodate someone else, and that change, right, is uncomfortable and scary. So you will sabotage your success because mm. you don't want to have that's, to change. That's interesting. That is. I wish Esther were here to I talk know. about it. Right? I need a therapist to come talk right. about this. But it's real. I see it in business owners all the time. What if my business takes off? What if my business works out? Then I won't have as much time with my family. And I might have to travel more. And I'm going to have to do new and scary things. Right. And so I'm just going to make sure I don't do anything to make my business succeed because then I won't have to think about all of that. Right? right? But they don't realize they're doing that. That's all happening on the subconscious level. Level, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that's scary. I mean, change is scary. And any even in professional. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, talk about your transition. I mean, we talked about this at Universal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right, pushes you. Pushes Universe you. pushes 
Um, she writes, so I had been running a singles group called Singles in the Suburbs while I was a lawyer. I was an actively practicing attorney, running a singles group as a hobby, but the singles group really took off, right? I mean, 11 years later, it's still around. It's got a couple of thousand people. It's not as active as it was when I was single, but it's still there. And it was a very successful group. And I met a guy in the group and I ran it with him and we dated and ran the group together for five years. And then he broke up with me, and it was a very sad story. And it spurred a very Maria. fun thing. I don't even like this guy. I know. Well, you know. Yeah, I've <laughs> it's all great. It's all great. He's yeah. happy. I'm happy. I'm married now. He's married now or yeah. has a baby, something like that. So it's all good, right? Yeah. It all worked, worked out. Um, but I, I, so I was, I was newly single, decided to kind of get my life together and figure out what I was doing to sabotage all my success. So I took ownership of my the fact that I didn't love my job and of the fact that I was alone again and all of the things, my money situation wasn't what I wanted it to be. So I said, what am I doing to cause it? I'm doing something, right? That's the only way I could change it is if I was a cause of it. So I better own it. And so I went on 35 dates in 35 days. Love it's that. all over the internet. You can you just Google, check it out. Google read a 35 dates, 35 days, and you will find it. But what I learned from doing that was that I, I needed to really step into a lot more fear. Yeah. Right, step into fear, and uh, and so I did that. And um, oh, hold on, hold oh, we're gonna hold on. We're on. gonna we're gonna let Bradley, Esther come Esther on up. Come on up. <laughs> so Esther made it. <laughs> <laughs> come on in. Can you fit? Can you fit? <laughs> yeah, so Yay, that's okay. Okay, so we're talking about thirty-five days in thirty-five days. Yes, with Rita. So. I um, learned I needed to feel more fear, do more things to be able to grow. And I decided through a series of, of events, right, to become a dating coach because the universe, like you were talking about, lined that up for me. So I was not going to be a dating coach. I was going to stay an attorney, even though I wanted to become a dating coach. Yeah. And then the universe kind of said, uh-uh, you're too comfortable. And I believe comfort is a really bad word. Comfortable is a bad word. Yeah. And the universe doesn't like it. And if yeah. you stay comfortable, then it will change the situation for you. It, you'll lose your job. You'll have a breakup. Something will happen to make you have to get out of that comfortable situation that you're not joyous about. You're just comfortable enough to not change it, right? That's where Complacent. I was with my job. Complacent, lazy. I mean, yeah. that's where I was with my job. Mojo. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, didn't love that. it. Didn't love it at all. I wasn't going to get out of it. So the universe restructured my company, basically took away my position, gave me a non-lawyer position, said, this is what you're going to do now. And I said, I quit. I don't want to do it. And I stepped into date coaching, right? And then ultimately that turned into business coaching and the women's business yeah. garden. And then so. you're like, you're in your lane. I'm in my lane. You're in your lane. I'm in my lane. It all yeah, works out. To find your lane. Yes. It is. We're talking about it. Yeah. Especially when driving through Washington, D.C. Yes, yeah. traffic. I can't even stand it. <laughs> so sick of it. Hello, Esther. Hi, Esther. Hi, ladies. How are you, darling? I'm good. I made it. You yes. made it. Woo! Yay! Love it. Love it. Love it. But we were talking about fear based, you know, because I think you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and even in dating, too, I think fear is a huge, huge piece, right? Fear in relationships, fear of losing that person, you know, and I think I've seen it, you know, a lot of times where people will, they're so encased in someone or they're like, oh, wow, I really found my match. And then they kind of mess it up because they're so scared of Absolutely. losing that person. But then that's, it's like ridiculous. That's why you lost them. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you were so scared of losing them. You, so scared of losing you created that you situation. Created situation. But what we were talking about before you walked in was fear of success, fear of mm -hmm. actually having it work out. Yes. What if the relationship actually goes somewhere? And right? a lot of times that's the fear that I think in both in relationships and even just in dating, like you have one really good date and it's, it is oftentimes the fear of like, well, what if this person likes me back? And what if we're really connected? And then, what would that be like? What would it be like to settle into a space mm -hmm. of like receiving that kind of like love and connection from another person? And a lot of times we don't consider that a thing to be afraid of, but we are. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, I was saying it, what I noticed, at least from a coaching perspective, and I'm curious from yeah. you know a therapist perspective, is the longer people were used to being single, the longer mm -hmm. the women I worked with were used to their single life, the more they were sabotaging their success because ultimately they would have to change their schedule and their routine and their habits to let somebody else in. Yeah. And they didn't want to do that. They didn't know they didn't want to do that, right? But that's what they were doing. Yeah, that's which true. I think fits with your what you were talking about in terms of comfort, right? Like, I mean, we have a natural inclination 
to maintain the status quo, even when we don't like the status quo. And so absolutely, I see it both with singles, like if you've been single a really long time, you've lived alone, you've managed your life, and it's like, well, I want this partner, and I want us to be like, you know, equal partners, and we're going to do all these things, but an equal partner requires you to create an equal amount of space in your life and, and, a, and a person yeah. and a, real, a, a real life person a real life person but that means be. being equal right means yeah. you have to give up something like yeah. eventually you yeah. have to compromise you have to yes. both people have to give up a little bit to be equal absolutely right? and nobody like nobody likes that at the end of the day no nobody, nobody wants to give up anything <laughs> nobody you know we we want change we want the things we want without necessarily having to do the work i mean that's a lot of the I can't reach the bell, but ding, 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 <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have to really think about one of the questions I ask and I ask my single clients and I ask my clients who are in a relationship who are trying mm-hmm. to make changes is, okay, so especially when they, they feel really stuck. So tell me about the partner you really want or like how you want your partner to behave if you're already with somebody. Paint me this picture. Like who is this person? They're, they're characteristics how do they live their life what do they do do they have kids yeah, all, of yeah, yeah, all of it yeah all of it i mean all oh, perfect picture mm-hmm. and then tell me about the partner that that person would want to be and are you really doing that like do, have you created a life that makes room for that person and are you doing the things that you need to do for yourself to be the kind of partner that's attractive to somebody that you actually want to be in a relationship with and a lot of times we don't think about that yeah we yeah. get focused i do on the same thing with my business do. clients right paint me the picture of your ideal business how is it operating how is it working mm-hmm. what are are you doing what strengths are you using and then have you created the ability to have all of those things happen in your life have you provided the yes. space you need in your schedule in your mind mm-hmm. in your office in your actual physical environment for these things to happen and usually not usually, usually not. not and it's the it's no. that last question that people don't do like most of us we can spend a lot of time fantasizing about what we want right. both in business and in love it's that second question. It's the of action. Like, yeah. It's the action. action. What are you doing? Right. Yeah, and, or like the fear of it, right? I mean, yes. like, I mean that's the yeah. whole, I mean, I think that's a major reason behind it, like fear of the unknown, which is, you yeah. know, like maybe someone, does, they don't even know, maybe they just haven't had that type of relationship. And when they meet somebody, um, even being connected in your job too, I mean, yeah. that's scary. And, you know, and then they just say, okay, well, I'm just going to self-sabotage it and... Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then we're done here. And they don't realize it though, because remember, they will blame it, especially if they're perfectionists. They're going to blame it on something else. It wasn't yeah. their fault. It can't be their fault. No, especially it's never perfectionist. Their fault. It can't yeah. be their fault. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, no, no. It was everything else in the world except what they did or didn't do. Right. Yeah. But yes. owning it, I think, is important too. Like, yes. You know, if you own it and say, "Okay, I'll work," like, how do you use it for the people that are fighting or, you know, how to if they're trying to have not a partner who's just like, well, like you're just always going to be that way or whatever. Mm-hmm. How would you? I mean, I think it does go back to owning it and really and getting really clear. A lot of times we are our fears and our and our unwillingness to sort mm-hmm. of really get vulnerable. And, and that crosses across everything we do in life, but especially in relationships. It's it's having really scary, difficult conversations. It's being really soft and open and going like, hey, this is really what I want and what I need. And that you don't have to justify those feelings. Right. Like if you want somebody who's going to like, call you every day like you don't have to have a good reason for that like you don't you don't need to convince someone of that you just need to be willing to say like hey, hey. this is really this is what I need and, and looking you for. have to be able to ask for it <laughs> you have to be able to ask for it too scared because, because they're, afraid. they're afraid of scarcity yeah what if that person, person thinks I'm high maintenance and what if that person goes away then they're not the right person for you because they can't give you what you yeah. need yeah. right yeah. but that that's it's that uh, scarcity mindset mm-hmm. that there's not enough what if this is it? What I love that part. I love that part. Yeah, yeah. it's so true, though. It's like, oh, God, I got to tell the whole story of the dating story over again. Is not have a video just to replay it? You know, that <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's like, oh, God, I got to do this all over again. Yep. Like, I got to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that, that's how people are with almost everything when they're in that scarcity-based mindset. They'll hold on to relationships too long. They will hold on to the wrong clients too yes. long in their business they will hold on to um, the wrong structure for their business mm-hmm. the wrong thing they'll hold on to the wrong everything because what if something else doesn't come to fill that space right, right. but if that space is full nothing can come to fill it right right it's right. just that yeah. and in relationships that's so the i always say you're not dating a mind reader you have to tell them what you want and need Right, you have to, but then they get scared. What if they don't do it? But then if they don't do it, they're, they're not the right one right. for you. Or they don't like you. Like, and that makes them not the right one for you. They're not the right one. They, they don't you. like you. Don't like they're you. not right for you. Yeah, That's, I know. They're not first here. Right. Yeah, I know. I know. It's <laughs> like if they're not they're calling not. your back or texting. They don't, they like, don't like you. you. Yeah. <laughs> or, or they like you, but you're not a priority. 
in their life, right? That's debatable. Which which means you want to be if you want to be a priority, you're not going to be okay with that, right? Yeah. 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 It's like somebody can like so like I, in fact when I did my Hold um, on though, you're saying if someone likes someone likes you. So here's what guys are saying. Text I can like you as a friend and I can like you as a friend and want to hang out with you, right? Uh-huh. And maybe in 2 weeks when I've got some free time, I'm going to say want to go to this concert, okay. right? Yeah. And it's not that they don't like you, it's that they don't want a relationship with you and that's very different, yeah. right? But we'll take it as oh, he texted me and asked me to a concert. He must really 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 uh, really yeah. like oh, me. Oh, it depends on where you are. Like if you were like if you establish a but you're still saying that they're still thinking that way. Well, I'm talking about at the early stages, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, at yeah, the yeah. early yeah. stages, yeah. Because there are levels. And yeah, I think yeah. that that's also part of it, and especially if you are dating with a goal to find somebody that you're going to be in a serious relationship with, then those early dates are, like, it does feel really stressful and mm-hmm. does get really fearful because there are, but there are people, and they will like you. They'll like you enough. You know, mm-hmm. they'll like you as a friend. They'll mm-hmm. they'll like you enough to like maybe want to make out with you or sleep mm-hmm. with you or any of those things. Right. But right. that you are not a priority in a I like you enough to carve out space in my life to figure out where this is going. And I think we have to start to get comfortable with acknowledging that and then being really honest about what we want. <coughs> yeah, and it sure. does come back to the scarcity is sort right. of trusting that there are people out there who like you and want to be on the same, you know, at the same level that you like them and want to be moving in the same direction. And you can't, you can't feel. So what, what I add to that is I had my clients celebrate the nose, celebrate being ghosted. I had them do a one minute dance party. Like if somebody ghosted them or didn't text them back or didn't ask them out, I had them dance and say, whatever universe means to you. Thank you universe for creating that space. So clearly unambiguously and quickly so that I have the right, you know, I have the energy and the mindset and the time to go out and find the right person. The quicker you can find that out, the better you are. Would you want somebody that makes you feel like maybe tweetable they kind of moment you? from Rita? Right. Tweetable Ooh. moment. Tweet. I expect yeah. all the tweets <laughs> at, at Rita Goodrow. Tweetable <laughs> moment. Definitely tweetable. Yeah, that's, it's so ghost true. Ghost dancing. Ghost yeah. dancing. Yeah. Hashtag dance, ghost dance dancing. Dance it out. Yeah. Dance it out. Yeah. Yeah. But be yeah. be grateful for it being clear. And not ambiguous, so you don't waste any more time and energy on the wrong person, right? So it's amazing to me how scared people are to find out, but I would want to find out sooner than later. And if that means asking for what I need and somebody saying, I don't want to give that to you, right, then so be it. Now I've got the time and energy to go find the right person instead of, you know, kind of being in this gray area so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's not a fun place to be. <laughs> it's kind of like being out on the streets of Washington, D.C. Yeah, tonight. welcome <laughs> to D.C. <laughs> it's a little bit like traffic. Yeah, oh, God. Um, well, you know, let's talk about how important. Like, so you have to talk about therapy is not a dirty word. And I think that a lot of people, you know, are, and you're doing events. So I want to hear more about this because I think it's so important. Um, real quick, because we got about four minutes. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quick, 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 quick. All right. Um, yeah, so yeah. talk about because I think it's important because I think having coaches and having therapists and are very important to being and if you don't have one get one and talk Definitely. to Rita get, get both. one get, get both. both get both get, both. get a coach get, get, and a, get coach. a therapist and yes. get a therapist you, you can go. do different things you need everybody yes. needs both I definitely if, if you ever have a coach starting to dip into therapy to therapy please run away <laughs> coaches cannot do therapy no, right yeah. Yeah. but um, therapists usually don't want to do a lot of coaching so I you know yeah. we're good friends we're good friends we are yes. good friends yes. we spend a lot of time with <laughs> We share clients, we're good friends, we have different focuses. But yeah, so therapy is not a dirty word is, you know, it's sort of my mantra, but it's also an event series that I host really all, I guess technically all over the world. I did one in London this spring. Um, That's awesome. So there's one actually this Friday here in D.C. Leave work early because traffic will be terrible. (laughs) Two hours Um, later. (laughs) Two hours later. Come on, Department of Transportation. Right. Get it together. <laughs> I'm telling you. But so essentially, it's a happy hour. So it's really, I like having, I, I love to throw a good party. I love to hang out. And as a therapist, most of my friends are therapists or coaches. And we get together. And it's not about sort of having therapy sessions. But it is about being able to be in conversation with people who have a lot of expertise in things that matter, like dating, like relationships, like your health, your stress, all right. of these different things. And so therapy is not a dirty word. It's essentially kind of my answer to that. I bring out four or five of my therapist friends Mm -hmm. um, for a very informal panel but it's literally it's you know typical DC happy hour it's food it's drinks and you come out and you can ask whatever you want I mean people ask about their sex life people ask about depression they ask about how to find a therapist they ask why we became therapists but it's always really great conversation And I think one of the things speaking of fear is recognizing that 
part of the reason we are hesitant sometimes about therapy is because we're afraid of it. And, you know, okay. we it's a secret. And my goal is yeah. to make it not a secret. Yeah, because yeah. so. it's important. It is. That yeah. people feel like it's something that they've done badly to have to cause it and it's not like it's self not. growth yeah you can be very 100 percent in a perfectly great spot and still even professional and in, in, in relationships when you i hear the relationship everything is perfect we couldn't be more happier i'm like <laughs> clearly it's just, it's just bad yeah, everything is okay perfect. things are bad yeah. but even people who yeah. are like great relationships they love to come in and we'll yeah. do maintenance sessions yeah. and you know my example is like you know if you're a professional athlete you don't stop going to the gym no. you still yeah. have a trainer you have a, because you, you train your mindset your, too yeah. hello train your mind build that muscle absolutely you got to yeah. keep working it. it it's not enough you can't just do it and then forget about it right, right. it's ongoing you have to keep the exercise of the, the brain Moving. just as much as you do the body right, right? Yeah. which means always learning always, always, always learning. learning and think about it i mean would you i don't want to be who i was you know five years ago no. a year ago yesterday right because i've learned so even from yesterday i learned so i mean you want to constantly evolve and be the best version especially absolutely. you know to help like at least for my kids i mean i'm gonna like yeah. Yeah. teach them uh, the more i know the better <laughs> Off the world will be. It's true, and, you know. Um, so. It is very true. And, yeah. and if you take that on to relationships, so you're growing and changing, and mm -hmm. then the other person's growing and changing, yeah. and so it does take yeah. a little bit of extra effort. And I will just add one more plug. So yeah. for No Shave November, yeah. the theme for this Friday's Therapy is Not a Dirty Word is um, all about men and mental health and emotions and relationships. That's so we're good. doing. We've got a whole art show and lots of men coming out. So oh. yeah. Well, did you hear that, ladies? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Photos so of men. We're just we're like to know the time, and, <laughs> and we'll talk after the show. <laughs> you don't know, but thank you, ladies, for being on the show. Um, we have to wrap up. Unfortunately, we have uh, another show coming on, but next week, make sure you tune in because we're going to have Molly. Elaine, oh. I know, Carol Star Taylor. I'm so excited I for know. this one. I know, yeah. oh my God, it's going to be amazing. So make sure you go on to Amazon, Born to Be Me, order your yeah. book. It is amazing. These, a lot oh. of great women wrote pieces in yeah. this book. And, and it's, really good friends. Yeah, and it's just authentic piece, right? So talking from your authentic mm -hmm. self and not uh, just what you see on Facebook timelines. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Ooh, I'm just breaking stuff. <laughs> Tune in to the Dating Advisory Board show Wednesdays at 6 p.m. to learn how to lead your love life like a CEO leads a company. The Business of Dating show. We discuss how to approach romance like you would approach the boardroom with confidence, grace, and focus. Learn how to advocate for your needs, brand you, determine your core non-negotiables, create a board of advisors and more. After all, the key to success is collaboration, both in business and personal relationships. Make sure that the reflection in the mirror is the best version of yourself before you start swiping right. This is Jen Hecht, Chairwoman of the Dating Advisory Board, and welcome to the show.